In the bustling metropolis of Neo San Francisco on Earth, Jasper Quill was a quantum mechanic, not just your average grease monkey, but a tinkerer of the fabric of space-time itself. His workshop, Quill's Quirks and Quantum Queries, was cluttered with half-assembled quantum drives, holographic manuals, and the faint smell of ionized air. Jasper was known for two things, his unparalleled skill with quantum mechanics and his absolute lack of punctuality. His daily routine involved late starts, long lunches, and bouts of inspiration that struck at the least convenient times. One lazy afternoon, as Jasper tinkered with a particularly stubborn quantum drive that liked to phase in and out of reality, a shimmering portal opened in the middle of his workshop. Out stepped a trio of Zelaxians, insectoid beings with iridescent wings and a perplexing number of blinking eyes. Jasper Quill, the lead Zelaxian buzzed, his translator barely keeping up with his mandible clicks. That's me, Jasper said, not even looking up from his work. And you are? We are from the Galactic Council, another Zelaxian explained. We require your expertise. Our flagship, the Glimmering Antenna, is stranded in the middle of a battle due to a failed quantum drive. You come highly recommended. Jasper, who rarely got visitors from beyond the moon, shrugged. Sure, why not? I could use a change of scenery. As Jasper packed his tools, his AI assistant, Blinky, projected a risk assessment. Jasper, the probability of catastrophic failure is approximately 47%. This mission could be perilous, Blinky warned, his holographic face frowning. Jasper chuckled. When has that ever stopped me, Blinky? But your life insurance doesn't cover intergalactic incidents, Blinky persisted. Jasper zipped up his tool bag. Add it to the list of things to worry about later. Upon teleporting aboard the glimmering antenna, Jasper was greeted by Captain Zorblax, a Xyloxian who stood at an imposing seven feet tall. Jasper Quill, we are in your hands, Zorblax said, gesturing to the chaotic scene outside the viewport where laser blasts and photon torpedoes danced between starships. Jasper nodded and was immediately taken to the engine room, where the quantum drive was sparking and fizzing in ways that no quantum drive should. This is your problem? Jasper asked, raising an eyebrow. Yes, a Zelaxian engineer replied. It started when we attempted to recalibrate the flux matrix. Now it's all wibbly. Wibbly, Jasper repeated deadpan. Technical term, I like it. Jasper, with his tool bag slung over his shoulder, approached the quantum drive. The air was thick with electromagnetic discharges that made his hair stand on end. All right, let's turn this thing off and back on again, Jasper suggested, only half joking. We tried that, the engineer said. It went more wibbly. Jasper cracked his knuckles. Time to get hands on then. With a deft move, he removed the drive's outer casing, revealing the swirling, glowing innards that seemed to pulsate with untamed energy. Whoa, you guys really did a number on this, Jasper muttered, his hands moving swiftly to adjust the micro-oscillators and tune the quantum flux field. As Jasper worked, the battle outside intensified. The glimmering antenna shook violently, throwing tools and Zelaxians alike across the room. Stabilize the ship, Jasper shouted as he recalibrated the drive's core. We're trying, Zorblax buzzed, his voice calm despite the chaos. The enemy has us in a tractor beam. Jasper, unfazed by the battle, continued his work, occasionally pausing to crack a joke or two, much to the confusion of his Xyloxian audience. Why did the photon cross the nebula? Jasper asked, tightening a bolt. To get to the other side, where the quantum entanglement is less of a joke. The Zelaxians, unfamiliar with human humor, simply blinked their numerous eyes in bafflement. With the drive partially stabilized, but the ship still in danger, Jasper realized they needed a bold solution. We need to jump, Jasper declared, but the drive isn't fully stable, the Zelaxian engineer protested, his antennae twitching nervously. 
Exactly, Jasper said with a smirk. Sometimes you've got to run before you can walk. We're going to initiate a micro jump. It'll either shake us free from the tractor beam or turn us into a very expensive fireworks display. Captain Zorblax pondered this, his multifaceted eyes reflecting the starlight. A daring strategy, but we trust your judgment, Jasper Quill. Jasper nodded and went back to the quantum drive, now humming with a more rhythmic, less wibbly pulsation. Blinky, prepare the jump sequence, and if this doesn't work, remind me to update my will. Already done, Blinky chirped, his hologram flickering. Jump sequence ready. With a deep breath, Jasper activated the jump. The glimmering antenna vibrated intensely, the fabric of space-time bending around them. For a moment, everything was blindingly bright, and then, just as suddenly, dark. When the lights came back on, the crew found themselves floating peacefully in an uncharted part of the galaxy, far from the battle. "'We're alive!' the engineer exclaimed, his voice a mix of surprise and relief. And free from the tractor beam, Captain Zorblax added, checking the sensors. Jasper Quill, you are as reckless as you are brilliant. Jasper just grinned, wiping grease off his hands, all in a day's work. Now, let's finish fixing this drive properly. With the immediate threat gone, Jasper worked with the Zilaxian crew, teaching them about the finer points of quantum mechanics. The Zilaxians, in turn, shared their advanced technology, which was both baffling and fascinating to Jasper. Through a series of adjustments, recalibrations, and more than a bit of improvisation, Jasper not only fixed the quantum drive, but also upgraded it with Zilaxian tech. With the glimmering antenna now fully operational and even more powerful than before, the ship set its course back to the heart of the Galactic Council's space. Jasper, now something of a celebrity among the crew, spent the journey back exchanging stories and jokes, much to the Zelaxian's bemusement. Did you hear about the human who tried to synchronize the quantum oscillators? Jasper asked, sharing another joke. No, what happened? A curious Zelaxian replied. They got entangled in the process. Now they're their own grandparent. Jasper chuckled. The Zelaxians didn't quite get the humor, but they appreciated the attempt, their soft chitters filling the room. As they neared council space, an urgent message came through. Kale Vrax, the very enemy they had fled, was attacking a nearby system. With our upgraded drive, we can get there in minutes, Jasper pointed out. Time for a little payback? Captain Zorblax agreed, and the glimmering antenna jumped to the system under siege. Arriving in the battlefield, the ship's new capabilities were immediately apparent. They outmaneuvered the enemy with ease, thanks to the improved drive which allowed for swift, unpredictable movements that confused and outflanked Vrax's forces. Jasper, at the heart of the action, coordinated with the Zelaxian engineers to maximize the ship's efficiency, turning what was once a disadvantage into their greatest strength. The battle won. Jasper and the crew of the Glimmering Antenna were hailed as heroes upon their return to the Galactic Council. The story of the human who taught the Zelaxians about humor and bravery, and who turned the tide of a battle with his wits and a wrench, spread far and wide. Jasper was offered medals and honors, but he only requested one thing, a new set of the most advanced quantum tools to continue his work. Back in Neo San Francisco, Jasper's workshop became a place of pilgrimage for aspiring mechanics from across the galaxy. And as for the Zilaxians, they implemented Quill's quantum quirks into their engineering curriculum, a testament to the human who had taught them so much. Sitting back in his cluttered workshop, Jasper couldn't help but smile as he looked around at the photos of his new friends and the upgraded quantum drive he kept as a souvenir. Blinky, what's next on the agenda? Jasper asked, ready for the next adventure. Your schedule is clear, Jasper, except for a message from the Xylarchs. Who? 
Just pretend we never received their message. Now let's find this adventure before it finds us. Where did I sit that handy portal jumper? Must be here somewhere. As Jasper began throwing things around the room, Blinky was just about to say, I have it, and was instantly covered in old parts and tools. Jasper, hearing the faint whispers of his trusty AI assistants, called out, Blinky, where are you? Over here, Jasper. Jasper quickly uncovering Blinky, he noticed the portal jumper near Blinky. Oh, you have it. Why didn't you say something before I made a mess of my workshop? Blinky, looking as if he could quit right in that moment, sighed. Made your workshop messy, said, with a holographic eye roll. I tried to tell you, but you covered me in your workshop junk. Jasper, with a smirk of his face, said, Oh, well, never mind that. We have an adventure to catch. The once noisy workshop of Jasper Quill fell silent until they returned with more junk.